Hello, in this quick demo video, I'm going to show how Apache Iceberg works in Trino. Uh, I have an eight part blog series about Apache Iceberg. I review what it is, the advantages of it with multiple engines supporting uh, uh, Iceberg tables that live in your object store on any of the clouds or even on-prem storage as well. Uh, I go through Apache Iceberg uh, architecture. So I show where the metadata is stored at the same level as your data. I go through snapshots and then how the metadata is laid out on an object store. So the best way to show you that is to uh, do a quick little demo. So in here, I'm using Starburst Galaxy, which is our managed um, Trino product. So I have a cluster running. I have a Iceberg S3 bucket called Iceberg Demo SB. I'm going to go ahead and create a table uh, using the TPCH generator. I have 25 rows, really small. I'm going to show the create table statement on this. And it is a parquet based table. Uh, the type is Iceberg and it lives out here in this S3 bucket. So let me go ahead and select star just to show you that I have some 25 rows that are in here. I'm going to go back out to S3. I'm going to refresh this bucket. Now I have this nation dash UUID. And the reason why that UUID is in there is for scheme evolution. So if I wanted to rename this table, uh, other tables can now also be named nation as well. So that's why this uh, unique ID is in here. So now if I come into uh, these different folders, I have a data and a metadata. I have a one parquet file because the, the table is so small. Then I have this metadata folder. And as you can see, there's metadata in here. There's a JSON file, some stats, and some Avro files. And that's for uh, the metadata that lives next to this iceberg table. So other engines can come in and figure out exactly what files belong to this table at a certain time. So let's go back into Galaxy. I'm going to go ahead and insert a single row into that table. Now if I come back out here, notice I have more metadata. So the metadata is there because I have different snapshots that are being created every time I do an operation to this table. An operation could be an insert, it could be an update. So let's go ahead and uh, update. So I'm gonna update that row I just, I inserted called new nation. And let's go ahead and say select star. So I go to the bottom of this, I have Trino Islands, uh, which I'm creating, I um, will be the president of, I believe. And so now if I come back in here, I have more metadata out there. And then I have, um, let me go into glue because I'm using glue as a, uh, a meta store or a catalog uh, for iceberg. So if I refresh that, I now have a nation table. So inside this nation table, I have columns and under this advanced properties, I have the latest metadata location. And notice that there's a previous one in here too. So what's happening here is every time an engine like Starburst Galaxy is going to interact with this iceberg table, like do an insert, I have to let glue know that, hey, there is a new metadata file that's out here. That's all we use glue for. That's all an iceberg catalog is, is literally the table, some information about that table and the latest snapshot file. That's it. All the main meat of the table is stored out here in these metadata files. That's what makes it so powerful. And so talking about multi-engine support, let me go into Athena here. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this iceberg. Now I have a nation table because I just created it. So let me go ahead and select start from that nation table. This could be Spark. This could be any of those engines out there. So we're, all these engines are interacting with a single iceberg table. They can insert, they can do merge, they can update the data on this table. And that way you're not uh, locked into some kind of vendor. Your, your data is in your own object store and you can use these different engines to work on that, that data. That's the power of Apache Iceberg. So hopefully this helps out. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. Thank you.